Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the moon. I'm your host for this evening, Lawrence Ray. And today I am joined by my esteemed co-host, Ricardo Martinez. Um, and today we are lucky to be interviewing George Stalidis, uh, a man hailing from Greece who creates art NFTs and 3D art and stories and is otherwise known as Glowleaf uh, uh, online. Uh, so how are you doing today, George? Hi, nice to be here. Uh, yes, I'm fine. I'm great. <laughs> Good. I like to talk about uh, Bitcoin generally and uh, my artwork. So this is this is great. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, should be should be perfect. I'm always good down down to talk. Oh, I don't think we've had anyone on here from memory who um, is like into like crypto or Bitcoin art. So it's going to be interesting, I think. Um, but when it comes to art, uh, assuming this is something that you've been involved in a long time. Uh, I mean, normally people who are into art have been you know, doing artistic stuff since they were young children. Um, what projects were you working on and doing prior to discovering Bitcoin and crypto? And I guess like how has, how has that, how has like bit, bit discovering Bitcoin, uh, uh, how has that changed your art? Have you seen that actually sort of uh, make a difference to how you do your art and when you create it and the style that you create? Well, basically I'm a writer. I, I've, I've been writing sci-fi stories for, for many years now. And uh, at some point, I started to make uh, books and sell them online. And the funny thing is that I didn't consider myself a writer. Uh, and I started to, I got an award. I still didn't consider myself a writer. Uh, I got a, a screenwriter's award for a short uh, film that I made in Greece. Uh, and I still didn't consider myself a writer. Uh, I, I started to sell online uh, because I write in English uh, on my, you know, my books, my short stories and all that. It's uh, basically a mix of sci-fi with Greek mythology. I do my own uh, thing, my own different uh, world. Um, I can show some of it here. And uh, the, at some point, well, well, after I got like, a, uh, these are reversed now, but you can find them all on my site at uh, George Saulid is my name dot com. Uh, and after I sold like a, a hundred copies of each of my books, at some point I said, okay, they, they, maybe I'm a writer now. <laughs> so I made it a business because I'm, uh, I'm not that artistic. I'm more entrepreneurial. I like to make uh, things that, uh, you know, that sell, that are commercial, that uh, are profitable. Um, that's no, that's the challenge. That's uh, that's what I like. Um, now, at some point, I discovered Bitcoin. It was like eight years ago. So you can say I'm uh, I am a bit of uh, an not not an original. Okay, I'm not an original because I just dabble. Uh, but um, I started uh, with Bitcoin and all that. I didn't quite get it, even though I'm a computer scientist. I didn't quite get it because it was very hard back then. There were no books. There was no Bitcoin standard book. There were no podcasts. There were, it, it's, it's completely different to, to what the information that we have now. So yeah, basically I became a Bitcoiner a year ago. Uh, you, you could call me a maxi, a Bitcoin maxi. Because basically all I do is uh, Bitcoin and all that uh, I own online. I don't, I don't uh, own any of the other coins. I do sell on, uh, on Ethereum, on OpenSea and all that. I do try some of the other things like uh, uh, NFT platforms and all that. But th those are just, um, you know, to test them out, to see if they work, to do some innovation uh, and all that. Now, I, I don't know if there's another person doing what I do. I do sell NFT ebooks. Um, OpenSea allows you to have a, a text field that opens up when you, when you own the NFT. So you can find uh, on my site the, the NFT books that I have available, um, which I sell the NFT for like nine to $10 in Ethereum. And when, when you own it, you unlock the download link and you can get the, the ebook. And uh, I am allowing you, I'm giving you the right as a, an NFT owner to, to, to resell that, that token, okay, if you like. 
um, there's no there's no like big demand or anything for that. I don't know if maybe it's too innovative yet still. Uh, I've sold about a few dozen uh, ebooks that way, uh, mostly because I wanted to figure it out, you know, to 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 offer that to my to my readers, and I, I like to innovate. I was I was telling Ricardo that I'm a, I'm an early adopter on on many technologies. So yeah, I think that uh, we're gonna we're gonna use a lot of uh, cryptocurrency in the future. I hope most of it that it's Bitcoin. And um, I use it. I use it all the time. I sell on my site. I sell uh, my ebooks. Uh, I accept Lightning, same as Bitrefill. And uh, I think it's like the future of the of the internet. To be honest, that was long-winded, but I think I covered a few things. If I've never heard uh, of you as an author, what's the book that you recommend that I start with? Like, what's your most popular book that you've written? Uh, my, I don't have a print book. My most popular one is uh, Pickle Pie, and uh, which is a cyberpunk uh, Greek, fan, Greek, uh, Greek mythology book. Uh, it even mentions uh, cryptocurrency in it because I have a guy in there doing like shady stuff and he's using non um, uh, non trackable you know anonymous uh, cryptocurrency payments at some point uh but it's not uh, like a big thing it's just mentioned uh yeah and uh, another one is this one which is oh, it, it's not for this audience it's uh, seven deadly roommates uh it's like uh in in greece and fantasy and uh, all that it's a bit uh, more f- funny and romantic that's uh, those are the not the best seller, okay? Those are the best uh, reviewed ones, and that people enjoy. Gotcha. It sounds pretty cool. Like I um, I uh, obviously when I was like looking at your stuff, I made the assumption that you were into the art first and then got into writing. But it sounds like the other way around, like you got into writing and then into the art, um, which does make sense, I uh, guess, as well. Do you want me to to tell you what happened? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a it's a bit uh, silly. But, no, no, I started off as a writer, but uh, I actually got inspired by people. You know, people, the the people who sold got, sold the NFT for like sixty nine million uh, about three years ago. Uh, because I make my own books, needed uh, I needed artwork for the covers, so I got in touch with him. And uh, I asked him to give me, uh, to, so I could, buy, I could buy usage license, so I could use his artwork for my books. And I was inspired by him because he, he makes something every day. It's very, his work ethic is very inspiring. Uh, and uh, he has this ideology, he used to call it people craft. He used to say, I'm gonna make craft. He, he, he had zero filter. He, he, he wasn't striving for perfection. So I got in touch with him. He was a great guy. We 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 talked it out. We he gave me access to everything he made and every every new thing he, that he posted every day. And I used some of his artwork on my early books. You can still find it. I'm still using it because it's some nice uh, sci-fi stuff and all that. But at some point, I started to to want to make them myself because I wanted to figure it out. So then I became a 3D artist as well. <laughs> that's the uh, that's the funny thing, um, and uh, now that uh, for example, uh, I partnered up with um, with a three D printer, and uh, for example, I designed this. Okay, this is uh, Satoshi. It's how I imagined him. Okay, he's sitting on his laptop, and he's uh, uh, you know he, he's coding Bitcoin and all that, and uh, I I made this three D model. Uh, and this is available for uh, for sale. Uh, people uh, people seem to like it. And uh, this is one of the early test uh, prints that we made. And uh, this is this is, this got quite a bit of um, nice comments. You know, good reception in the in the Bitcoin community. Uh, if you want to, I can send the link so you can add it. Uh, 
on the video so uh, so that people can find them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, please do. We'll, we'll add that on like, all, all the stuff you're up to. Um, but that's cool. Like, yeah, yeah, definitely. It seems like you're someone who's not afraid to just like try out new stuff, get involved. If you think something's cool, it sounds like you're just going to get involved in it basically and give it a go, which is awesome. Um, it's like a good, um, a good way exactly. to be. Um, and obviously, as you said, you mentioned earlier that you're um, a Bitcoin, uh, I guess, a uh, first sort of thing, but uh, you, you've used OpenSea. And so that's interesting because not many people, I think a lot of people seem to either mint their NFTs and things on like OpenSea and Solana and other things, or they kind of try and just be like, you know, Bitcoin sidechain and liquid and things like that only. So but you've done both. Um, so I guess it'd be interesting to see. I guess like what uh, I don't know if you, if you wouldn't mind, would you be able to like say kind of right, run run us through what it's like to mint something on OpenSea and then what it's like to mint something on like Bitcoin sidechain, like Rare Toshi, for example, like the differences or, or how you do it? Because I think people listening will probably be interested to know yeah. how the hell you actually do it on either of them. So it'd be interesting to, to hear that. Basically for now, NFTs are a mess. They are uh, very clunky. They're not user-friendly. Uh, even people who actually use them and buy them don't understand the technical stuff. They get uh, hacked all the time, but hack meaning they they get uh, fished because people ask for their seed words and they give them with metamask and all that. So it's a mess right now. But you still we have this huge uh, you know market that's uh, evolving. And of course, uh, me as an entrepreneur and an artist, I wanted to grab like a small slice. So yeah, I do have. Uh, NFTs. Um, OpenSea is the biggest one. Um, I used to I used to like Ethereum years ago. I tried to do code apps and all that, uh, but now I I loathe it. It's uh, Ethereum is very expensive. The the fees are huge. The gas fees and all that. Um, they are like 60 80 100 dollars right now, depending on what you want to do. Uh, so now we're doing. Uh, other things. Thankfully, they started li- liquid Bitcoin uh, from uh, Blockstream, uh, made the Reartoshi NFT marketplace. This is that is Bitcoin themed only. So I've made uh, a series of projects. I call them uh, Bitcoin avatars. You can find them at bit- bitcoinavatars.com and uh, Absolute Bitcoin again at absolutebitcoin.com. Uh, those are completely different ones, but I put them out on uh, Rare Toshi. And I've, quite, I've had uh, quite a good reception on it. I've sold hundreds, honestly, right now, because I, I must produce them. I'm not, uh, I'm not shy about making stuff. As I said earlier, uh, Beeple was very inspiring about his work ethic of making one stuff every day. So I kind of, I, I tend to do that. I make a, a new thing. I, I create a workflow so I can make uh new new things almost every day not every day but almost every day so yeah i made some profile pictures for bitcoiners uh so be, so you can stay anonymous or for fun uh for example i have a bear which is a teddy bear so he's a bear if you're feeling bearish you put on the profile picture that you're a bear and it's silly and it has a hat on and like with a, a santa hat for example now that it was christmas and all that uh, I have the, the bullish guy who is um, basically a minotaur. Uh, he's bullish, okay, and he's in various uh, uh, situations. I don't know, he's a warrior, he's, a, he's like smashing stuff. He's a podcaster. I have a, I have a bullish podcast. I can send it to you <laughs> afterwards. Uh, so, and he was like very passionate, you know, talking about Bitcoin. And uh, people seem to like them. Now, the minting process is... Um, the Rare Toshi is still very new. It has some bugs, but the developers are perfect. They're awesome. They're very responsive. Uh, we send them uh, issues and they fix them. Uh, the minting is very cheap. You just need like, um, I don't know, 30, 30 cents in US dollars to mint something. It's, it's, it's nothing compared to Ethereum, which is like uh, tens or hundreds of dollars. And it's very fast, it's very usable. It does, it is buggy, it's, it's, it's still very buggy, but they're fixing it all the time. By the, from, from, the, from the day I started in, on Rare Toshi, there are two major uh, fixes in the, in the site. So I believe that we have a great community there. 
and uh, you can find a lot of my NFTs there. Yes. Now, for there are not there aren't many uh, capabilities. For example, the NFT books I mentioned. Uh, basically, what I need is a text field that unlocks for the NFT owner. OpenSea has that. I requested that from Rare Sources, from the developers, and they said they will uh, implement it. Uh, when they implement it, I will be able to um, to offer my ebooks on uh, Rare Tosi as well uh, for a few sats. Uh, we can set the price, and it's L L sat L B T C. Now um, to mix it all up, I, I'm a, quite a jack of all trades. Uh, I don't know if you <laughs> you'll notice that. Uh, for example, with this. I did, uh, I did a little trick. Um, I made an NFT, a video, which is the render and it's rotating. So that's the NFT. Okay, fine. Uh, I put it on a rare Toshi and I've written uh, in the description that uh, the owner of the NFT gets a 10% discount on the 3D print. Okay. So that's like how you can blend things how you can create community and uh, offer um, offer some incentives for some people to buy it. And I, I, I want to be clear, because we, we know about the outrageous prices of NFTs and all that. Uh, my NFTs are like $10 or $12 or something like that. It's more of a digital patronage. Uh, Adam Back uh, said online uh, on Twitter that uh, his contribution to Rare Toshi was do it uh, for digital patronage, not for the outrageous prices and the, the art world and the art galleries and like millions of dollars of NFTs and all that stupid thing that 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 Bitcoiners hate. That, that's the problem. That's <laughs> when when Bitcoiners see my my stuff, if they don't know about it, they say, "Oh, you're doing NFTs." But my mine is just uh, you know, if you want to support me, it's not outrageous. It's like ten dollars. It's twenty dollars. At most, it's like sixty dollars. Um, so you can you can try out the things that I that I'm trying out. You can get the NFT uh, and have a discount on the on the print that you want to order. So those are some tricks you can do with NFTs and innovation. Uh, I don't know if you, that's what you wanted to hear. You're the first Bitcoiner yeah. that we've had on the show from Greece. What is the is the bitcoin scene like in greece is there like an active bitcoin community within the country uh, yes yes actually yes we have uh, the greek uh, bitcoin community uh we met, we've done a few meetups uh, we are actually some of the oldest i didn't meet them but, uh, when a few years ago i only only met them last year uh but we have some great uh, people uh and uh, yes we do do meetups we we talk about bitcoin of course, they, they asked me about NFTs as well <laughs> during the meetup. So basically, we were discussing most of the things that I'm uh, discussing right now. Many people were interested. Um, we have uh, some guests. We had, uh, we've had we had Adam back years ago to talk to us. Uh, most recently, we had some Bitcoiners and uh, podcasters that made some uh, intro about nodes and self-sovereignty, how to hold your own Bitcoin and all that. Um, th there are many, many stages, many stages. Most, most people are, are at the beginning stages, to be honest. But uh, we have an active Bitcoin community because uh, after the capital controls, after the good crisis and the capital controls, it was the best argument. It was, um, you were talking to someone and you were telling him, you know, your, your bank can, can limit the amount of money that you have access to, which is your money. That, that's the problem. So you just tell him that with Bitcoin, no one can stop you from, from accessing your funds. The bank can, has no control over you. So it was like the best argument. If the other guy gets it, he gets it. So I think that many, many Greek Bitcoiners became, um, became holders from, uh, from that uh, era. And uh, of course, we're it's okay. That was years ago. Uh, we still have the same argument because it still stings, you know, the the effect of the Greek crisis and the capital controls in two thousand nine. Uh, so yeah, Bitcoin fixes this. So <laughs> that's the main uh, thing. Um, for example, 
uh, I, I've taught a few people how to use uh, Lightning, how to use Bitrefill. This is my node, for example. Uh, so I have shown uh, to a few people how they can refill their phone using their Lightning wallet. I use it directly from my, from my Lightning wallet, directly from my node. Um, and uh, I, re I refill my phone all the time because you do have Greek uh, companies. The Greek companies are Wind, uh, Vodafone, and uh, Cosmote. Uh, and you do have the, the available, uh, you know, the, how do you call it? The gift card. No? Yeah, basically it's a gift card. You can refill the, the balance easily. And I, I've done it like four or five times already. Yeah, I suppose it's interesting to see how like the Bitcoin communities in each country differ um because i can imagine like uh with greece the as you said there's, there's a lot of people who are, are in it from the beginning but then obviously I, I was thinking exactly that i remember i remember when i was younger um watching the news and stuff back in like 09 2010 and like seeing all the uh the issues with like the essentially the collapse of <laughs> of things uh, when it comes to the money side of things so i can imagine people were uh, would be slightly more uh, open to and optimistic about bitcoin um just because you're allowed to kind of get your control back over your uh of your funds um i suppose um well i guess not to switch the conversation too much but um one thing i was interested about as well because uh, i've been you hear a lot recently about like the metaverse um and uh, obviously you've got like facebook changing their name to meta which i don't think is necessarily um all that connected to the metaverse although i think that's what they're trying to to do um what, what I guess because obviously you're you're doing stories and art and as you said you're someone who's like uh, on the brink of innovation a lot of the time and you're an early doctor and willing to kind of try new things and innovate so what what are your thoughts I guess on the the metaverse as like a as a thing as a concept and because I, I, I can imagine you're somebody who's probably seeing it and thinking hey you know I, I can do something new here or like try you know try something with this like what do you what do you think on it I suppose like what's your opinions and uh, are there any sort of uh, ideas flowing in your head that you don't mind sharing of course I, have, I do have a, <laughs> a strong opinion in it uh, to to start with I think it will happen I think it will happen because um these big companies like facebook and google and all that they're gonna try and make it happen uh, so it will happen and people will love it and people will get uh, you know uh, hooked on to this digital experience just like we are now with uh, likes and the uh, instagram and all that it will become even worse than that um the main uh, the main issue with uh, the metaverse and the um, and the, this whole uh, you know digital living and all that. The main issue is that these will become walled gardens. That's the problem. So you know what the walled, walled garden is? It's that expression. We're talking about Facebook's metaverse. We're talking about Google's metaverse. Um, so that's a problem because when you have everyone on on a wall inside the walled garden. You can control their information even even worse, even in, in a huge degree. Uh, you can control which uh, currency they're going to use, cryptocurrency for today, uh, for today's um, you know innovations. Uh, we know that uh, Facebook tried to do Libra, now they're doing something else. They're, they're going to use cryptocurrency. It's not going to be Bitcoin. I'm, I'm sure of it. It's not going to be Bitcoin, which they should use. Uh, so they're gonna they're gonna create. Uh, a digital experience that people would need to use and then you will have to use their own rules their own currency cryptocurrency the ones that uh, facebook and, and the big companies will support uh, if it's uh, central bank uh, digital currency is even worse cbdc's and um, the problem is that um, as we've seen with uh, with our digital experience and our online experience, uh, it starts to um, to erode, uh, you know, personal connection and all that. We talk to people all the time, but we feel empty. We feel alone. We feel lonely. There are people who are depressed, and th these same people might be talking to like thirty people online all day. Uh, the best uh, the best advice to to connect it with the earlier uh, discussion we've had the earlier topic 
the best advice we've had on Bitcoin Twitter is to meet uh, Bitcoiners and, uh, you know, the community on, offline, to do a meetup, because, um, you know, you have a common interest and it's good when you use that online uh, community to actually meet in the real world and maybe create uh, some meaningful connections and some friendships and even partnerships and even, you know, business uh, deals. Why not? Everything is a part of life. Um, the problem is that uh, I think it will happen. I think it will be. Uh, the metaverse is not only VR, it's also AR. AR is augmented reality. Augmented reality is the overlay on top of the real world. And uh, from the AR that we have right now, um, it's very intuitive. It's very, it's very easy to get used to. So people are going to get used to using AR. AR, basically, every, every, the entire world got a, got a taste of AR with Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go had a, was just a game where you chased, you know, uh, Pokemon on, on, in the real world. Um, this was a, a huge taste of augmented reality. Uh, these things actually work. They're, ve they're very good. They're very popular. Uh, people love them. Kids love them. Even grown-ups love them. And uh, it's going to blend the online experience with the real world experience. You're going to see things through your phone. The first stage is, is uh, through the phone, just like Pokemon Go. The next stage is with the virtual glasses, uh, with uh, Google Lens and uh, uh, Facebook tries to make uh, digital glasses and a few other things. And uh, the next step, which is sci-fi, but it's not that far off, is with uh, implants in uh, the eyes, or at least uh, with um, cyber lenses, you know, for the uh, to have a to have an overlay. Uh, and why why do these companies want this thing? Because just like Amazon of today, if you're not on Amazon, you're you basically are non-existent. If you're a merchant and you're not selling on Amazon, if they block you, if they, if at some point, if 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 for some reason. You can't sell on Amazon if they block you or if you don't have access to it from your country or something like that. It's like you don't exist in, the, in today's uh, marketplace. Um, that's, that's the main selling point from, of the metaverse to, to the corporations. They're, they're, they're telling each other uh, to their uh, shareholders that we're going to create a world garden. Uh, people will become addicted to it. They're going to love it. They're going to spend endless hours each day in it. And uh, only, only the companies that we want will show up there. Only the products that we want to promote will show up there. There will be no conflicting products, no conflicting opinions. Everything, you know, it's going to be very mainstream and, uh, you know, uh, a very bland experience just like we have now with pretty much every consumer uh, mainstream product. George, I know that we encountered each other on, on Mastodon, on the Fediverse. Do you yeah. see like a free and open source alternative to the metaverse um, arising from, from either the Fediverse or just like a, a whole new project where it's like an open source metaverse? Well, uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not an expert on that. I just, you know, use it and double on it. I basically don't have to use free and open source products. I choose to because I understand how, how these can be controlled. My, my node is, the, is using open source software. It's Raspi Blitz, for example. Um, and I, I try to use some product. I basically just do my own business, you know. I'm going to use YouTube. I'm going to use Facebook. I'm going to use Twitter. I'm not, I'm not contrarian just, just for the sake of being contrarian. But um, I do think that we need it because we've seen uh, an increase in censorship in, in Twitter. We've seen an increase in censorship in, uh, in YouTube. Uh, we've seen the Bitcoin magazine um, the YouTube channel get banned, for example, uh, which is an, an actual magazine. Why, why, why would they ban it? There's no reason to. I don't know why they did it. That, that's what I'm saying. That um, Yes, we, I, I understand that we need it. Now, I don't know if the solution is Mastodon. I don't know all, all the other uh, things that pop up, you know, the other options. Um, the problem is with these things, with these social networks, is that they need the network effect. 
and we understand that the network effect is very easy. It's very hard to break. It's very it's hard to to achieve the critical mass, and it, then it's very hard to break. Everyone's on Facebook. Everyone's on Twitter. Everyone's on YouTube. If you if you start something else, even if it's better, uh, you need millions of users just to get. Uh, some something going it's uh it's, it's hard to get that network effect where you find other people there and uh, we were telling with uh, ricardo earlier when we were chatting that uh, the the bitcoin hackers mastodon server is quite big so we have some stuff to to talk about there, there are plenty of people there but that's unusual usually it's uh, like a ghost town most servers most uh, for projects are a ghost town um so yeah i think it's hard to get that mainstream traction on the other hand you can do sp um, specialized stuff you, we can have uh, you, you, you know we, we can have uh, bitcoin uh, based uh, youtube and uh, twitter and all that i don't know and and it will spill off to other areas uh, we can uh, we can do specialized stuff there's no need to have this mainstream thing that is Twitter and Facebook and uh, YouTube. With within the past, with like different innovations, uh, big companies haven't got involved quick enough, right? Like Bitcoin managed to go for arguably a decade, maybe before big, big, big companies got too involved. I mean, obviously they always had some interest, but um, and then like the internet as well. Like, okay, yeah, there were large companies involved at the outset, but it wasn't quite like it is now, where essentially everything is run on Amazon Web Services, <laughs> and uh, like, everything's extremely centralized as of the last. Uh, again decade maybe and maybe even less than that um so yeah. i was kind of hopeful that with the metaverse uh you know it would kind of fly under the radar a little bit and then kind of get picked up and, and by that point it's kind of too late kind of thing you know like the, the linux has already been created you know uh, the open source version of the metaverse has already been created and people are used to using it and then facebook's come too late to the party sadly uh it feels like that's not going to happen um and, and things like, uh, I think signs of that you can see because Apple's famous, aren't they, for their walled garden approach to everything, really. Like once you have a yeah. Mac, you have your iPhone, blah, blah, blah. And they're going to do AR as well. And, and with, with Oculus, uh, you know, you, you had to have a Facebook account and they had, you had to link it or else essentially your Quest 2 was just a paperweight. Um, and I know that because I had to keep my Facebook account just for that purpose, just to play Oculus Quest. Um, and so you see a lot of that kind of practices occurring. Um, so I, I find that quite, quite frustrating, I suppose. Um, I, th I think something that, uh, that you touched on like a, a little bit, I guess, is like how we can do it better um, and how things can be done properly and, and kind of for, for, for benefit people more than just large companies. Um, when it comes to things like NFTs or not NFTs, but maybe like the crossover of like stories and art and the things that you're doing and then the crypto world. Um, at the moment, it feels like all we do have really is NFTs, like right? because everyone's so pumped about NFTs and, and and there's loads of money in it. That's kind of feels like where all of the artists are putting their attention for fair enough, correct reasons, right? Like artists have been underpaid for millennia, essentially, and like have had no fame until they die kind of things in the past, you know, so it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> um, but like, do, do you, are, you there, are there any ways that you've kind of thought of or, or, or kind of things that you've come across, I guess, where where there are, there are better ways for art and crypto to cross over or better ways for artists to monetize what they're doing? Uh, I don't know, like I was thinking, because obviously you're, you're quite a sort of um, a guy who experiments quite a lot of new things. So I was wondering if you've come across anything that you think, hey, you know, five years time, this instead of NFTs, or it could be a better version of NFTs, or is there anything you can think of like in the future that kind of would be better for artists, like a, a better NFT or an opposite or an alternative to NFTs for, for ways of monetizing things? Yeah, uh, well, I don't know if you can predict something new uh, right off the bat, but uh, I think NFTs will actually be become helpful uh, because uh, uh, as I said, you can use them as digital patronage. It's it's something. If if you if you're not um, into this market just to resell it and make millions or and, and all that, uh, you buy something which is a collector's edition, and you buy it to support the artist that you like. So um, many people tend to do that. We have Patreon, for example, and it's many iterations already we have people wanting to support their favorite uh, podcast 
we have people wanting to support creators and artists and you know musicians and all that um let, let me interject something here uh artists are a business they're terrible they're absolutely terrible okay that's why i say i don't consider myself too much of an artist because i'm too practical too, too commercial and too business oriented it, it's funny i do do art i know but uh when i talk to other artists they're terrible at business uh they don't know how to um, how to sell their stuff there they don't understand that they, they that they own intellectual property in the in the things that they're building either music video or or uh, images or uh, or uh, fiction um and uh, i'm not saying that i'm doing it perfectly but i try to to understand it and i try to bring it to a different level now the the thing with nfts is if if you keep it uh, for the Unity. If, if my my fans, my fans, I'm surprised, but but I have a few fans. That's uh, that's very shocking to me. I do have a few fans, and they have bought uh, my NFTs because they're not very expensive, and they just wanted something that has a digital signature of mine. I made it, so it has my own digital digital signature. It says George Saulidis on the blockchain. Uh, specifically, for example, on the on uh, liquid uh, on the rare toshi, and people do want to support me, so uh, they they help me. They have some of mine that is collectible, um, and I can keep on making things. That's the main thing. Now uh, we were talking about what's the, what's the big thing. The big thing I think is lightning. Lightning opens up a huge um, gamut of possibilities. It's going to be the bedrock of the Internet of Money. We, we still haven't uh, realized how big Lightning is going to be. Lightning is, is very um, easy to use. It's, we, there are bugs with it. There are problems. There are, uh, you know, uh, um, UI issues and like so and, and users don't quite understand do, do they say that they say is is lightning another cryptocurrency it's not bitcoin they say it's lightning no it's bitcoin but it's uh, it's denominated in sats just for ease of use and it's still using bitcoin it's a layer two it's something uh, on top of it and it's faster and it's, uh, easier to use um i've so i seen uh, a recent metric i think yesterday that 5,000 podcasts are using uh, Lightning uh, payments and uh, donations. Uh, that's a huge thing. That's a huge thing. So I think artists will shift to to this um, um, to this technique of uh, of community supported projects. Uh, we will have st stuff like Patreon. We will have streaming sites. If, we, if someone creates a video stream, they can have it streaming like 10 sats every every minute or something like that. It, there's a there's a scroll bar and you can change it, for example. There are many iterations of it already. And uh, people are going to use uh, lots of implementations uh, through Lightning to, to support each other. Um, for example, imagine a Netflix that is... Uh, that works on lightning you don't pay um you don't pay a fixed fee for everyone you you watch a movie you watch a movie and uh it it charges your account with like five dollars i don't know what the what the rent amount is gonna be five dollars in sats and those sats are gonna be distributed distributed programmatically to the intellectual property owner, to the director, to the actor, to the music composer. Uh, think of how much this can create, this, how, how much this can make a, a creator economy that was going to blow up. You're going to say to someone, okay, I'm going to make a movie because I've done some filmmaking. I've, I'm going to, oh, sorry. I'm going to make a movie and uh, I, need, uh, I need music for my movie. Okay so you're the, you're a composer all you need to do to get paid is give me your lightning address, and i'm gonna plug it in to the basically it's a script okay it's a program 
uh, I'm gonna add it to the to that Netflix. And uh, every time we get paid, you get two percent of the amount that we get paid. You get paid in Sats directly to your Lightning account that you've given me, and it's all by a program, and it's all by uh, uh, by computer. It's all fair. It's all done, uh, you know, automatically. Um, and once once these things start to happen, then we will see some artists, which I've said, artists don't understand the business decisions and all that. Um, we will, if it becomes easier for them, we will see much uh, fair uh, system of, uh, you know, uh, artistic, uh, you know, compensation and uh, payment and all that. It will become straight from the consumer through a platform uh, to the creators. And that uh, the thing with the movie was an example of a collaborative thing. It can be a pure, pure creator. That'd be really cool if, uh, if, if that could be done. Um, it kind of goes along with like one of the ideas I thought with NFTs before was like um, if you had kind of like a version of Spotify where no one paid a monthly fee and it was entirely free, but like every artist when they released a song released like 10 NFTs or something that, that, that came with that song. And then that way, like people who wanted to support the artist or, or collect something, like they wanted to collect their you know, they, they wanted to be one of the 10 people who, you know, owned a token corresponding to Drake's new single or something could do that. And then that way everyone else gets to enjoy it for free and the artist gets their money kind of thing. So I suppose it kind of, there's lots of like different ways that this sort of, um, this approach can be done. But what you said sounds pretty, pretty cool. Like the way that you can just have the people who are involved in making something and get their proportion of it fairly and, of, and openly so that everyone can see and, and that way you kind of if you're also if you're paying for a film or tv show you can actually see oh okay like i really like that actor and he got like you know four percent of the amount i paid and, and it's definitely in his wallet i think that's kind of a cool idea i think that'd be uh, a pretty good thing to to encourage there's definitely good stuff that could happen with uh the future and uh the use of, of lightning as you say and uh, even nfts or, or or even like the metaverse and decentralized social media and there's also bad ways that it can be done right so um, I suppose the the hope is that the the right way wins. So to totally sort of switch the topic, to be honest. But it's something I wanted to ask you, um, like when I looked at your work, um, and I wanted to make sure I asked you before we we end, we end uh, the podcast. But it was that um, when it comes to your three D art, I quite like some of the stuff you do, and and there was a few pieces I, re I really liked actually. And I was wondering like how because we spoke to Jason um, like a long time ago, who was our um, our guy for like 3D um, and art and, and things like that, but uh, internally a bit refill. But um, what, what like, uh, so, and obviously if you, if you don't want to share, fine, but uh, you can just tell me to, to piss off. But uh, what, what software do you use for your 3D art? Like what, how do you create this stuff? Like, is there a process that you have and, and like, what do you use to do it? Uh, no, no, I will talk about it, no problem. Uh, basically the, the program that I use is Daz 3D, Daz Studio. Um, it fits my own uh, workflow. Um, it's uh, it's it's both free and very expensive at the same time. Uh, it's free to use. It has some free basic uh, libraries and assets and all that. That's a whole different world, 3D world. Um, it has free assets. There are libraries. You can create stuff. You can you can import uh, stuff uh, from uh, other uh, libraries. Uh, but uh, there's some of some of the best premium content on it is uh, you, you pay for it. You pay for it, and there are plenty of sales. And you can you can have something. You know, you, you can have your eye on something and grab it at fifty percent off. Uh, I tend to do that, uh, and you end up spend, spending thousands <laughs> at the end. So it's both uh, free and very expensive. The main issue is that it's uh, quite, um, how do you call it? Uh, there's a bit of a learning curve. Uh, um, there are tutorials, there are many things, but it's, it's quite steep. It's a very steep learning curve. Uh, it was quite hard. I made, as I said, I made stuff every day. You can, you can see it on my, I, I post those things. And uh, I posted them on, the, on, my, on my blog. Um, and you can see from the first render that I made, which is uh, now it's uh, two and a half years ago, I think. 
uh, I was making stuff every day. So after like uh, a year, I had about two, 200 uh, renders. So it wasn't every day, but okay, it was quite a, quite a lot of production, you know. And as I was making things and I was trying things out, I was getting better and better and better because you need to think, um, uh, you, need, you need to do some programming tricks, uh, with, you know, with the camera and all that. You need to do some filmmaking tricks, composition, you get better with the lighting. Lighting is, uh, is quite, uh, it's a whole different thing in, in filmmaking and, you know, artistic uh, storytelling. Um, so yeah, I, does 3D works perfect for me? I like it very much, and uh, it it helps me. It helps me, uh, you know, bring what I have in mind, what I uh, what I imagine, what I'm trying to do. I, I can I can make it, you know, uh, appear in in 3D space, and uh, then I can uh, once I'm done with it, I hit render. And if I'm satisfied, I say, okay, that's done, and I publish it. Basically, that, that's what happens uh, every single day or every other day. So, yeah, it's quite hard, to be honest. You need to know a few things, but that, don't let that stop you. If you like 3D artwork, just give it a go. It's free to start using it. Uh, and, uh, okay, well, welcome to the community of uh, 3D artists, if you're interested. All right, thanks. I'm going to download it and... Just check it out and see how it works. I've always been like interested. I, I I wonder, you know, obviously I'll either get into it and, and, and go with it or I won't. I'm a bit like that. I try everything I can and then just, hey, you know, if, I, if, it, if, it, if it takes off in my brain, then it takes off. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But um, at least you still appreciate the art, even if you're making or not making it. Did you like something in particular? Oh, well, when it comes to your art? Yeah. Yeah, so I'll see if I can find what I was looking at. Where are we? So I had a, I was looking through tons of stuff. Um, where are we? Where's the one? There's a specific one I really liked, actually, that you sold. I'm going to see if I can try and find it. Uh, I think it was one of the NFTs that you were selling. And I was like, that's pretty cool. And then I think it already been sold or whatever. I think I was on OpenSea as well when I was looking at it. So I have to find it. Although, actually, this is pretty cool already. The One of the avatars. I like the... Um, so you've got like a... I'm trying to explain what it is. It's, um, it looks like the... You know the Lightning Network uh, uh, ATM, the orange box of Lightning Network ATM? Uh, it kind of looks like a Game Boy to a degree. You've got yeah. like one of these, like it's like a robot character holding a Bitcoin logo on the Bitcoin Avatar site. I really like oh, yeah. that one. The, yeah, the, the, the robot. Yeah, the ro robot sat, how do we call it? I don't know. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, that's a cute, uh, you know, uh, it's, a, it's a profile picture. So you like that one, yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. Those, it wasn't what I was thinking of at the time, but yeah, it's, this is I, I love this though. I could see like a little um a little movie or like uh you could do like a little TV series with that where it's like uh like teaching people about Bitcoin or something. I could see kids liking that, you know. I, I think it would be really cool. George, yeah, you, that's you mentioned idea. your your work with film uh, several times over the interview. What what films have you worked on? You said you won an award for one. What? Well, no, no, for for script writing, right? For writing a short film, which was in Greek, so yeah, it's, I can't, uh, you know, explain it here, so it's pointless. But uh, no, I I did. Uh, I went to to film school all, all quite uh, later on in my life uh, because I liked, uh, you know, making stuff with uh, cameras and all that. Um, but, uh, basically I worked in TV, Greek TV. Um, I did some work as a, as a cameraman, as a sound uh, engineer, uh, film editor. Uh, we tried to do a few things on my own. Uh, but yeah, the problem is that, uh, it, it required a bit, a type of persistence that I didn't want to offer because the, the marketplace is quite small in Greece. I, I don't know if you understand, I'm bilingual, so I do things in English. So basically I wanted to do stuff that's, uh, you know, for international audience. Um, and that was a bit hard to do in Greece. So I didn't pursue it that much, but thankfully I found uh, after, the, after writing, I found 3D art, which, uh, in which I use a lot of my knowledge uh, in filmmaking. I use composition, lighting, um, three-point lighting, for example, you know, expressions uh, with the models and all that. 
uh, trying to make a, a, a photo look dynamic, you know, have some wind on it, some have some movement, uh, try and make the camera angle uh, dynamic and, you know, like cinematic and stuff like that. I try to do those things. And uh, quite a lot of my filmic knowledge uh, can be seen, uh, I think, in my 3D art. Uh, if you check out the the artwork that I've made, which is I, I've made some of my stories. I've um, I've made some scenes of or or the characters, you know, um, uh, even pinups because uh, some women, you know, cyborg women and all. Uh, so you can see some cinematic uh, stuff, which is my my characters from my stories, uh, which is so it's either a scene or just a presentation of, of one of the characters in my stories. And uh, I think these add up to to the experience, you know, to the to the reading experience. I haven't tried to do any animation. Um, to be honest, I'm not very good at it. I have tried some animation. You can find some of my NFTs, but it's just a rotation, you know, and it's no, it's no big deal. It's a very basic animation. Uh, it's, animation is quite hard. It's quite hard. It's it's uh, it's unbelievably hard. You need uh, you need uh, lots of experience and uh, lots of skill, and uh, then it's uh, like ten times the work of uh, just getting an actor and uh, you know uh, <laughs> doing the entire thing on camera. Honestly, yeah, I, I'm always amazed when you see like um, uh, any anything that's animated in general is pretty amazing. Like I remember when I used to play like the uh, Final Fantasy games on PlayStation One back in the day, and um, even then, like some of the animation scenes, like I, I think I played Final Fantasy Nine recently um, again because it was one of my favorite games, and uh, you just see like the, uh, the okay, the game itself is insanely impressive for its time, but beyond that, like the cutscenes, you're like, holy hell, like how are they doing this back then? And you think like, uh, you know, even now uh, to do the same thing with all the, I'm sure it's better software and, and makes it easier, but even that, now it's got to be bloody difficult to, to even begin to do anything like it. So um, yeah, it's, it always amazes me animation, to be honest. Um, but also the character creation can be pretty difficult. And I know people often specialize in one or the other. I, I think I, from what I understand, like when we spoke to Jason, yeah. it was like, yeah, people often, they, they make the 3D model or whatever, and then the animator will, will purchase the 3D model or whatever, and then will make the animation from the model. So obviously you're just specializing on one side of it, which makes makes complete sense. Um, that's for sure. Okay, well, yeah, I mean, George, um, it's been awesome having you on. I, I feel like I've learned some new things, and it's kind of interesting to see like your perspective on stuff. And I think we agree on a lot uh, when it comes to the, the future of the metaverse and NFTs and things like that. But And it's interesting to see what you've been up to experimenting and Hopefully people listening have got a better idea of um, kind of how, how, how NFTs and minting is and, and, and kind of why you're doing it and why they should be interested in supporting you as well. Um, but yeah, is there anything you want to say before we head out? Any, any, you know, you've obviously mentioned some of the websites, but you can go ahead and mention them again and just you know, make sure people know where to find you and that kind of stuff. Yes, it was a great chat, to be honest. Uh, yes, um, I enjoyed it. Uh, the... Basically, I try out a few things, and I post about them on my Twitter, which uh, is uh, Saulidis G. You can, I'm, I'm sure we're gonna link it underneath and the, in the video, and uh, on my website, which is georgesaulidis.com. Everything I make or the, everything that I work on, I generally tend to post it there. It's a bit of a mess. <laughs> Don't expect. Uh, Organize things, you know, don't expect like a perfect, uh, you know, uh, library of my work and all that. It's everything that I make, I put it on there and you can find it and, you know, you will uh, get the link to either purchase it and all that. Uh, yes, I tend to do, to make a lot of uh, new things. And uh, I think that uh, Bitcoin is, uh, is the bedrock of the internet that we're gonna create from now on. And Lightning especially is gonna open up a whole new breadth of possibilities. And uh, I also have a, a shop uh, at Mythography Studios. Mythography Studios is where I put my commercials. It's my company's name. 
Um, and you can purchase my stories on uh, with Lightning or with fiat currency normal, as normal on uh, on my shop there. And you can find all the other stuff that uh, I've made, all the other products that I've made, which are polished and finished. So yes, thank you. Awesome. No, it's uh, much appreciated. I uh, yeah, it's been great having you on and. Uh... Yeah, I mean, uh, I hope that you have an amazing week and I hope that's the same for everyone else. Everyone listening, have an awesome rest of the week, day, month, et cetera. And um, we appreciate everyone for, for listening in. And uh, yeah, any questions, just feel free to shoot them into us. Um, and we can always get in touch with uh, George and pass any on about his art or ways to get it or find it if, if it's not been clear. But obviously we'll have everything in, in posted to belief anyway uh, on the video or audio uh, whether you're listening to it. Um, but yeah, thanks very much, George. Uh, thanks, Ricardo. It's been awesome having you both. And uh, everyone take care and keep buying Bitcoin. Okay.